Crude oil prices rise as the Saudi Arabian and Russian energy ministers meet in Qatar to discuss production, stoking speculation of a production cut. The first shipment of Iranian crude oil to the European Union in over three years sales with two more poised to follow in the coming days. Plus, as Nigeria's government pushes to diversify its economy, some Nigerians work to boost the dairy sector and promote locally made milk and yogurt, but faces stiff challenges. Thank you for joining us on Business Incorporated. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwawu. We'll, we'll begin with the crude oil market. Prices rose today as the Saudi Arabian and Russian energy ministers met in Qatar today to discuss production, stoking speculation of a production cut. On the New York Mercantile Exchange, light sweet crude futures for delivery in March rose 5.4% to $31.04 a barrel. In the Globex Electronics session, April Brent crude on London's Ice Futures Exchange rose 5.8% to $35.32 a barrel. And the first shipment of Iranian crude oil to the European Union in over three years sailed on Monday with two more poised to follow in the coming days. A tanker chartered by French energy giant Total SA sailed with 2 million barrels on Monday. Another carrying 1 million barrels for Spain CIA is poised to follow today. A third vessel, also of 1 million barrels and booked by Litasco, the trading arm of Russia's Lukoil, has arrived and will follow soon after. And to automobile now, Demla says it will lay off more than 1,200 workers this week at a pair of North Carolina assembly plants in response to falling demand for commercial trucks. The Mount Holly plant, which builds medium duty trucks, will drop to two work shifts a day from three for the 1,450 workers remaining on the job. The 1,600 workers left at the Cleveland plant will work a single daily shift. The plant had previously operated with two shifts. Meanwhile, Volkswagen's diesel emissions cheating scandal has weighed on the German carmaker's European market share for a fifth consecutive month as deliveries dropped in its home country and the UK. Registrations in the region by VW's namesake brand fell 4% to less than 128,350 vehicles in January, counted to a 6.3% increase in industry-wide sales to 1.09 million autos. To the global markets, uh, now shares in Asia were higher today following a rally in Europe and a 7% rise for Tokyo on Monday. After initially falling 1% in early trade, the Nikkei 225 closed up 0.2% at 16,054.43 points. Analysts say the early morning falls were due to investors taking profits after the steep prices a day earlier. In China, markets rose despite disappointing official trade numbers released on Monday. The Shanghai Composite closed at a three-week high, up 3.3% to 2,836 points, while Hong Kong Hang Seng Index was up 1% to 19,103 points in afternoon trade. South Korea's Kospi Index closed up 1.4% to 1,888 points, in line with regional sentiment. Other countries, a central bank left interest rates unchanged at a record low of 1.5%. While it's already half day into today's trade in other European markets, let's bring in DWTV channels TV correspondent at the Frankfurt Stock Exchange, Javier Aguedes, to bring us up to speed on the development in the market there. Thank you for joining us, Javier. Right, let's drive Hello, this. Hello, good to see you. Right, Javier. Let's drive this conversation from the auto sector. Reports say car sales in Europe was upbeat. What's driving this growth? That's right. We saw an increase of about 6%. And what's driving it are two southern countries. It's Italy and Spain, both of which have seen uh, increases in the car sales. It's important to mention, of course, that Spain is one of the fastest growing economies in the Eurozone right now after years of crisis. And that is now being reflected in how the market is developing for car makers as well. Perhaps the only disappointing news for uh, some of the brands is, of course, Volkswagen. We already had it in the report. And it's the same uh, here in Europe. They have definitely dropped in their market share. That is, of course, a logical consequence of the emission scandal. But other than that, the industry in Europe should be happy with the results in the last month of January with that 6% increase in sales. 
Now, Javier, give us a sense of ECB Chief Mario Draghi's speech yesterday. Do we have an idea now how the ECB will act next month? Well, I would say that we have uh, sort of an idea of what should happen according to the words of Mario Draghi. And uh, while well, the markets are basically expecting further easing, further measures to shore up the economic uh, growth here in the Eurozone and especially to keep the price stability uh, and seek that increase in the inflation rate, which, as we know, is set to 2% as a target that is very, very difficult uh, to achieve as uh, what we have seen so far. Now, what Mario Draghi said was uh, quite interesting in the sense that he is uh, attributing a lot of the turmoil that we have seen in the markets uh, to fear, to general fear of investors. However, of course, those fears are almost always justified. And it's not only because uh, the situation in the international uh, landscape has gotten worse, especially considering the growth uh, reduction in China, but also because things here are not working very well. And let's not forget that there still is a lot of criticism about the work of the European Central Bank, essentially guaranteeing that they will do anything it takes to keep um, the euro stable, while that definitely implies that some countries will not have the necessity to implement reforms. And we all know that reforms in the countries of the eurozone, economic reforms, are the only legitimate way to achieve an actual stability that will be sustainable. So that is why Mario Draghi definitely is having a rough time. Now, there are some good news from the crude oil market. So what's spooking the stock market today? Yes, well, the news uh, was actually pretty good, but it was definitely not as good as many had expected. We know that there is a uh, possible agreement between Saudi Arabia, Russia, and other OPEC countries in order to freeze the oil production um, to the levels that we saw in January. However, that is not enough. That is not what investors were expecting, because we know that there is an oil overproduction. It definitely affects you, too, there in Nigeria. And we know that uh, just freezing the production is not going to be enough. They should have reduced production in order to make that oil price increase. Now, that is perhaps uh, one of the biggest disappointments of the trading session so far. We saw gains at the beginning of the trading session. Now, the uh, markets, at least here in Germany, are slightly in the red, and this is possibly not going to change. We will continue to see that volatility as long as there isn't an actual solution to the oil price drops that we have seen and that have caused so much trouble at the beginning of this year so far. Well, thank you for your time, Javier. Javier Agueda, DWTV Channels TV correspondent, reporting from Frankfurt Stock Exchange. After the break, the Chief Executive Officer of the Nigerian Stock Exchange speaks and plans to attract investors to the Nigerian stock market. Do stay with us. Welcome back. Nigerian Stock Exchange, Africa's second largest, is looking to attract investors booked by a weak currency and oil price by offering more products ahead of a possible listing. Now, the boss also plans to add options to its portfolio of products to boost this flag in liquidity and help investors manage risk. The Chief Executive Officer, Oscar Onyema, says the Nigerian Stock Exchange, one of the main entry points for foreign funds into Africa, plans to launch a clearinghouse to allow futures and options trading this year. It will also change its ownership structure from a mutual firm of 500 broker members, a move that might bring in investors from abroad or lead to a share offer at some stage later. We would like to give exposure to participants in the capital markets uh, in asset classes that we are not necessarily trading, and that is where the synthetics come in. But that will not happen on day one. So there will be a product rollout schedule um, uh, as we get closer. And, uh, you know, so um, these products eventually, day two, day three, will come on board. But the critical thing is to start with real products that are existing uh, today that you need to manage your risk. The domestic investors do not have currency risk. They don't have exchange uh, rate uh, considerations. They have other considerations. Um, and so 
because of the current environment where you have challenges in you know, crude oil prices, which has put pressure on a balance of payment and all of that, the tendency is for us to do more sales and marketing to the domestic investors, especially the institutional domestic investors, uh, than the foreign investors. Oscar Onyema, CEO of Nigerian Stock Exchange. And as Nigeria's government pushes for more people to invest in the country's agriculture sector, which was once a top source of employment in the 1960s. In the north, one company is working to boost the dairy sector and promote locally made milk and yogurt, but faces steep challenges. Dairy processing has been declining over the years in Nigeria leaving just a few companies like L and Z still barely managing to stay afloat as they grapple with infrastructure challenges and competition from the imported cheaper products. The L and Z factory was started in 2006 with a capital of about $1,200 and targets Fulani cattle headers who bring in their milk for sale. Today, it has grown to have a processing capacity of 20,000 liters of milk per day. The plant also processes yogurt as well but officials say it's been difficult trying to grow the business. We have the capacity to produce enough to feed not only Nigeria but the entire West African sub-region. What is lacking is harnessing the milk at the right quantity, the right quality and delivering to the processing plant at the right time. Africa's dairy industry produced around 17 million tons of products in 2014, of which around 7 million were made from imported milk. That's according to the International Farm Comparison Network, which promotes knowledge of global dairy. Demand for milk in Africa is expected to grow sharply in the next decade due to the population growth and rising incomes, leading to an increase both in production and imports. Nigeria's Fulani cattle herders supply most of the milk here. They are known to roam in search of pasture and water for their animals. Hundreds have been killed in the past in clashes pitting the cattle herding and largely Muslim Fulani people against mostly Christian settled communities in Nigeria's volatile northeast. Most of them collect their milk in difficult conditions without proper facilities or equipment. To help farmers improve on their business, L and Z now goes out to their homes to collect milk twice a week, which is also tested before it is weighed and purchased. I am happy now because L and Z is buying my milk. Before, I would transport the milk to the market and sell it, but now the company is buying the milk from my location, so it is a good development. While more upmarket areas have a ready market. Poor infrastructure and transport networks also compound the cost of doing business. Electricity access and machinery needed to improve efficiency remain unattainable for many farmers in the country. Power cuts also cause losses for many milk suppliers. Abubakar says Nigeria's ability to produce enough milk to feed the West African region can be improved with goodwill from government. Nigerians producing yogurt, for instance, we don't have any reason to encourage yogurt importation into this country. It's sad and, and it's criminal for us to allow this to continue to happen. Nigeria is looking for ways to diversify from oil reliance. Africa's biggest economy and top energy producer has been hammered by low crude prices since it relies on oil exports for around 70% of government's revenues. The government wants to strengthen the agricultural sector and create jobs and reduce the reliance on costly food imports.